Thank you for having me. I want to really thank this museum for exhibiting these images. Um, this exhibition is part of a book I did called Purple Hearts Back from Iraq. It's portraits and interviews with 20 soldiers who were wounded in the Iraq war and have since returned home. I started the project, really started thinking about it in the summer of 2003. Um, what happened was I kept hearing on the radio and seeing the newspaper and TV reports of wounded soldiers and killed soldiers, but I never saw any images. And I thought that this was a profound lack of an important part of coverage of war, that we need to see the human cost of war. And so I felt that maybe if I found some of these soldiers and Marines who had come back and did portraits with, of, of them and spoke with them, that maybe people would have a little more sober perspective on what happens in war. There are no lists of wounded soldiers. You can't go to the Department of Defense website and find the names of wounded soldiers. So what I did was I went on the Google search engine and plugged in certain words like amputee, brain damage, local hero. And I started coming up with small newspaper accounts from hometown papers about the local boy who's returned home. Um, and I traveled the country for eight months from Maine to California to Texas to Florida and photographed these soldiers mainly in their homes but also at the Walter Reed uh, Army Hospital in D.C. and at two veterans hospitals in Florida and also at an Army base in uh, Fort Riley, Kansas. I have to tell you that I was not prepared for the kind of suffering that I would see. Uh, when you hear, you know, two soldiers wounded today, I'm not sure what image comes into your mind, but in my mind I kind of thought like small arms fire or something. But that's not what we're seeing in this war. And so um, the first two soldiers I photographed in the same weekend were both blind. The first one was an army ranger who was um, blinded by an artillery shell. And he sees nothing but black, night and day. He's got titanium plates holding his brain together. He lives in western Pennsylvania with his parents now. He was a, a wrestling star, a college graduate, had the world ahead of him, an amazing young man, Sergeant Jeremy Felbush. And that's his picture right there. Uh, the second soldier I photographed was Sam Ross, Specialist Sam Ross, who is also blind, who, when I met him, he was living alone in a trailer at the end of a dirt road in the poorest county in Pennsylvania. 21 years old, blind, an amputee, lost his hearing in one ear, his finger blown off, has shrapnel all through his body. Um, he was wounded in a munitions disposal operation. Basically, a bunch of mines blew up on him. And so after photographing these two young men in two, three days' time, I felt like I didn't know if I could continue this project. It was extremely depressing to me. But I also became increasingly incensed at the media coverage of the war. I just felt like I wasn't getting a realistic picture and I want a realistic picture, whatever that picture is. I want to know the truth. And so I just became obsessed with this project. I found more soldiers. I went to Walter Reed. Um, and it took me eight months to do the project. I interview all of them. They talk about their experiences. They talk about why they joined, how they were recruited. Um, they talk about life now as wounded veterans. Some of them talk about their problems with the VA, their problems adjusting. When I first started the project, I thought I was photographing physical wounds, amputees, brain damage, um, organ damage. But now when I look at my pictures, I see the psychological damage. I don't even see the burn victims or the amputees so much anymore. When I look at my own pictures, I remember how it felt talking to the soldiers. And I see the psychological damage, which continues, I think, for their lifetime in one way or another. And Vietnam veterans or veterans from any war, I think, will tell you um, that they, that experience will never go away, good or bad. It will never go away, and it becomes part of who they are. So I just hope that 
We as American citizens realize that these guys have come home. We now have 15,000 wounded in action. That doesn't even count the numbers of wounded in what I'm calling combat support. So this soldier here is a quadriplegic. Uh, he became that way. He was driving a tank in Tikrit, Saddam's hometown, and his commander told him to destroy a concrete wall that had Saddam's face on it. The wall, he ran the wall, the concrete came in and severed a spinal cord. He will never walk. He can't feel anything from his chest down, but he's not counted. He's not in that Department of Defense number on wounded soldiers because the wall is not considered hostile enemy. And so there are thousands and thousands of these other soldiers, some of them very, very severely wounded, that we're not so much hearing about. And I think that you know, they were in Iraq just like everyone else, or they were in Afghanistan, and they deserve our support just like these Purple Heart soldiers. Um, so I would like to um, open the floor to any questions. I'm happy to answer anything about any of the soldiers. Some of them I've kept in contact with and know about how they're doing. Some of them I haven't kept in contact with. Anyone? go back and uh, to, to go back to Iraq or go back into the active duty army sure. to you? Um, I would ask them this question, would you go back? And they all said yes, at least in the beginning. And I was shocked by this statement. And I thought, they're insane. That was my reaction. Look, they're blown to smithereens and they want to go back. And then I was actually sitting at the hospital with this soldier, Luis, and his father was a career Air Force. And he heard me ask Luis that question. And he said to me, no, you're asking him the question the wrong way. Ask him if his friends were back home, would he want to go back? And the answer then was almost always no. And that what every soldier pretty much said to me is that they're fighting for their friends. And they do anything for their friends. And I think the wounded soldiers feel quite guilty that somehow they feel as though they've abandoned their friends. Um, there's one soldier I photographed who I believe, he's not in the exhibition, he's in the book, Sergeant Josh Olson, who uh, lost his leg almost all the way to the hip. And um, I believe he has figured out a way to remain in the Army. Um, but most of the other ones have been medically discharged. Are there any women? There's one woman in the book, you know, when I, when I started, I had a, I got like the first wave of the wounded coming back. Um, there is one woman in the book, Lieutenant Jordan Johnson, and um, she was injured in a Humvee crash, and her legs were shattered. She was in a coma for several days. Another person in the vehicle died. She was returned um, to her unit in Germany against her wishes, but she has since been discharged. Um, now there are more women, but when I first started, I had a hard time finding women, although I wanted to find women. But now there are more women, because one thing about this war is that every place is a combat zone. If you're a truck driver, you're in combat. You know, I have not been there. They're responsible not all over the major cities. And Tet Offensive, some of the places, most of the places... The infantry soldier was safer in the field than being in the city. Really? So I got yeah. quite the Tet Offensive was MPs. Mm -hmm. They were military police. They were shooting 45s when they first happened. How, how about the cause? What do they say about why they're there? Well, I will tell you that I started asking them um, their definitions of freedom and democracy because some of them said they were there to bring freedom and democracy to the Iraqi people. So I asked them what those words meant, and I have to tell you that... Was that more like a, you know, a, like a, a state answer that everybody kind of says, or was that like from the heart? Well, that's what I was trying to get at, right? When I would say, well, what's your definition? What does that mean to you, freedom and democracy? And one soldier said it means that, you know, what my mom taught me is that I can play my PlayStation, I can go to the movies. Another soldier couldn't really answer, and in fact, 
That particular soldier, I asked him if he was voting in the presidential election because he had just turned of age, and I thought he'd be really excited to do that. And he looked at me and he said, no way, I'm not voting. And then I, and this soldier has said to me that he was in Iraq to bring democracy to Iraq. And I was stunned. I looked at his mom, and she goes, oh, no, we don't vote. And they happen to live in the state of Ohio. And so you would think that it was a crucial state one way or another, that they would want to participate in American democracy. So I think that um, some of the soldiers were very confused about the mission there.